All right. So hi, family. Welcome back and good morning. We're on, we're on lesson 202. We're in the reviews. And uh, the main idea for this review is I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as God created me. It's a review of a former lesson 182 entitled, I will be still a moment and go home. Why would I choose to stay an instant more where I do not belong when God himself has given me his voice to call me home? I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as God created me. And going back to the lesson, actually, of 182, I love this lesson. He talks about the child. He starts off by reminding us that all of us know on some level, whether it's conscious or not, that this is not our home. There is that ancient song that calls to us. There are moments where the veil is rent or torn and we experience something with such clarity and with such love that the innocence of our, our true identity is made, you know, it's, it returns to our awareness. And we remember that this is not our home. And from that place of I'm a foreigner here, I'm incomplete, I'm unworthy, something's wrong, something's wrong. We then from this vantage point of a body and physical sense rush out into the world and constantly seek to, to placate or uh, you know, soothe ourselves from this feeling state that something is desperately wrong and we seek it in all these different places. And he says, we try to find home in our body home in physical structures. We try to find our completion in our jobs, in our relationship, in our um, things that we, we believe are going to bring us pleasure or safety. And again, it's all seek and don't find. And it's a, it's a horrific uh, joke <laughs> until we recognize that it, that it will never ever pay off. And so he's actually asking us to stop for a moment and to hear the voice of the one on the inside. And he likens this one to the, in the inside as this small child. And I think this is such a beautiful image because each one of us, even in the dream, came in as a small child with amnesia. And yet the memory that we are love and we fully anticipate that we're going to express it and get it in return, is that native state of that little child until some trauma comes along and they're told for whatever reason or whatever flavor of the story, we're each given that message that you're not worthy. There's something wrong with you and you need to start making up for the fact that you are not lovable. And so let's return back to that child who first anticipated love because it knew it was love. It knew its innocence. It felt the state that I have done nothing. Mm -hmm. So this memory, this lives in our mind of where we're from, how we are, what we are, safety and love, and above all, completely innocent. He says, give this child a moment of rest. Because while we keep seeking externally, we're ragdolling, we're just dragging this child around and asking it to be so unnatural, so uncomfortable. And he says here, this child needs your protection. He is far from home. He is so little that he seems so easily shut out, his tiny voice so readily obscured his calls for help almost unheard amid the grating sounds and harsh and rasping noises of the world. Yet does he know that in you still abides his sure protection. You will fail him not. He will go home and you along with him. He says, this child is your defenselessness and your strength. 
-hmm. And another, another words of a way of saying that is this child is the memory of our innocence. The child's name is Christ. The Christ lives where we are at home in our mind, a thought in the mind of God. And that state that returns us to the awareness is the felt state of our incorruptible, inviolable, unchangeable, permanent innocence. And that's the truth because the separation was impossible, inconceivable to God. It never did occur, but only felt like it did in a dream. So it's that letting, being still, returning, going inward, protecting that child, giving it a home and a place within our thought. And he says, just for a little while, it's almost like he knows us very well. We can do that for a short time, give that child a reprieve, a rest, some peace before we pick up the torch and try to you know, be something else that we're not for a while. But um, this is the practice. Yeah. yeah. And you know, sis, this morning I was a bit ruffled, to be honest. I had mm -hmm. so many things to do. And I thought, boy, I better, I better review this lesson before mm. we come on here, like mm. just read through it. And it's interesting, I didn't get past the first paragraph. Mm. And what came was uh, a spontaneous guided meditation. Oh, beautiful. So I was like, I, I've got to be honest, guys. I was like, I don't have time for this. <laughs> So typical. Yeah, that's the ego right there. I'm like, no, and I'm lousy at meditation. I mean, guided meditation. You know, all the ego was just going crazy. Mm. I've, I've intercepted it and said, okay, I do have time oh, and I can you. do this. So I thought, well, okay, it's spontaneous. It came within five minutes or so. So maybe we should go through this guided meditation what do you think? you think oh heck yeah there's nothing i'd yeah. rather do yes um okay so i joined with the intent mm -hmm. in the intent with holy spirit that this be a felt experience because Thank you. when we really feel it even if it's just for an instant we've collapsed a thousand years of linear time which is a thousand years of suffering yes right? so why not go into the felt experience yeah. perfection yes thank you make it real make it yeah. Take anchor. Your start ahead and smack bang into the glorious heart yeah mm. so what i'm going to ask is is if you're driving right now don't do this <laughs> do not do this all right while you're driving see, our, disc see our disclaimer down in the show more notes anyway <laughs> Makes, you know, only do this guided meditation when, when you actually have, you know, seven minutes or 10 minutes free, okay? Because I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and to listen. I want you to take a few deep breaths. Set your intent to be still. Any thoughts, any agendas, any concerns, let them just pass through. Don't hook yourself on any of them. They're not yours. They belong to the ego and you are not the ego. Imagine that you've set your intention to meet with the most beloved child of God. He or she lives and moves and breathes within you, within your most sacred inner altar. 
This beloved child is your changeless being. Even when you forget, this child never changes. Now I want you to begin by gently moving your awareness towards a doorway. See if you can feel that doorway, sense that doorway, maybe even see that doorway. Move your awareness towards it. This is the doorway to your inner altar where the child of God resides. You're at the doorway now. Imagine placing all your thoughts and concerns inside your shoes. Put all of your concerns in your shoes. And then leave your shoes there at that doorway. Don't take your shoes into the altar chamber. Take a few deep breaths. And then open the door and step across the threshold freely, totally unencumbered, completely free of any concerns, any baggage at all. As you pass through that threshold, Approach your inner altar now and begin to feel its light and its glow. See if you can sense it. And find a comfortable position to sit in at the foot of your altar. Still breathing gently. Be still. And let the stillness enfold you. Breathe deeply into that stillness. Now rest in this sacred stillness where you cannot be threatened. All the angels in heaven surround you here. Immerse yourself in accepting and really feeling your innocence in this moment. Breathe your innocence in deeply. Let your innocence be the light of your being. And allow each breath of innocence fill your being with light. Watch and feel as this light shines away all darkness, all discomfort, all pain and all self-doubt.
stay within your heart center and breathe slowly. Then make a statement to yourself, to Holy Spirit and to God himself. As you breathe, feel the meaning of these words. I will be still an instant and go home. I will be still an instant and go home. Feel the light of your being increase and extend outward to touch everyone and everything. As you breathe, be aware that you are breathing in God's joyous will for you. This is God's joyous will for you. As you breathe, you are joining with the love that you are, with the innocence that you are. As you breathe, you receive the knowing that you are still as God created you. I am not a body. I am still as God created me. You are not a body. You are free as God's most beloved child. You are the changeless source of divine light and changeless innocence. As you glance upon your inner altar, you sense it gently pulsating in light. God himself, who loves you beyond your wildest imagination, has something he wants you to know. It's a divine gift that he wants you to receive. Can you receive this gift? Are you willing to receive this gift? Can you feel the essence of this gift that he's longing for you to accept and receive? You are his most precious treasure since before the beginning of time. You are his most precious treasure for eternity. You know that by your graciously receiving this gift, you and God are both filled with joy. You may not recognize the gift yet, but all you're asked is to open your heart and receive it. It doesn't need your recognition right now. If you do recognize it, good. If you don't recognize it, good. No.
pressure. Just open your heart to receive the gift and it will be known to you in divine timing. Now, in great gratitude, you know that when you decide to get up and go toward the doorway where you had left your shoes, you realise that Holy Spirit has miraculously and divinely repurposed everything that you had previously placed in your shoes. Holy Spirit has your back totally. He asks you, from this moment forward, when tempted to take back your concerns and your need to control and your self-doubt, to remember that you already gave these things to him. And now he asks you to trust implicitly that he will guide you in every moment that you turn to his guidance instead of to fear. Breathing deeply, I now ask you to gently come back to the body and to the room. And when you are ready, open your eyes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay there, family, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, sis. <laughs>